when I press launch, three, two, one, go. Often in game development, we want to have a sequence of actions and we also want to have some time in between those actions. So for example, you might want to click on this launch button, wait for, let's say three seconds, and you want this rocket to launch upwards. Creating this type of code is usually quite messy and cumbersome, but there's a keyword in GD script called await that makes creating these types of sequences effortless. So let's learn how to use await. I have a script here attached to the scene root node and in here, first of all, I'm going to show you the most basic use case of await. So let's create the ready function and let's put the await keyword right here. So what does await do and how do we use it? Await is going to stop the execution of code inside of a function and it's going to wait for a specific signal to be emitted and you're going to provide that signal to await. So for example, let's say that up here, before we call await, we create a timer, which we can do by calling get tree, create timer. We need to provide seconds. So let's say three seconds for this timer to timeout. And let's save this timer in a variable. I can say await timer.timeout. And then I can print something, timer timed out. And maybe at the start, I can say start timer. So let me explain what's going on here. First of all, we're creating this timer for three seconds and the timer starts immediately. After that, once we say await timeout, all execution will stop until the timer emits the timeout signal. And only after that, we're going to get to this line to print timer timed out. So let's run this scene and see what this looks like. You can see that we got start timer. And then after three seconds, we got timer timed out. So essentially, that is what the await keyword does. It stops and waits until the signal that you provide is emitted. And it's not only with a timer, you can use any type of signal. So for example, here we could say, let's get, let's get the countdown or was it the launch button dot button up. So now we're going to wait for the button to be pressed instead of the timer so that only when I press the button, we're going to continue executing the code here and print timer timed out. So as you can see, nothing is printing just yet. I'm going to press the button and now we got timer timed out. Okay, that's the basic explanation of await. And this is the most common way I usually use await. I usually, whenever I want to have a certain amount of time that I want to pause for, I will create a timer just like this and then await for the timeout. And I actually do this in a single line without creating a variable, I will usually just do timeout like that. So you can do it in a single line. Awesome, so now that we understand the basic use case, let's make the rocket launch when we press this button. So how can we do that? Let's get back into the script. Or first of all, maybe I should show you what the rocket looks like. It's very simple, it's just a character body 2D. There's a sprite collision shape and a script. And inside of the script, the only thing you should understand now is that there's a launch function. And when this function is called, the rocket is going to start going up. So we need to call this when the button is pressed. And we're going to use the await keyword for the sake of demonstrating it. Okay. So we can, believe it or not, just do this inside of ready. When the scene starts, we can basically say await, let's say launch button dot button up, just like we did a second ago. And then after that, we can say, let's get the rocket and call launch. Now, when I press the launch button, 
the rocket is going to start going up. So that's another example for you with the await keyword. Um, you can see that it's very useful to create sequences that you want to have um, in your game. Okay, now I'm going to show you even something cooler. We're going to create a countdown timer instead of launching the rocket immediately. So we're going to change the label um, each second counting down and when it reaches zero, we're going to launch the rocket um, just like we're doing now. Okay, so first of all, let's go back into the script and let's create a function called countdown. This is going to take an integer called seconds. So if we pass three to this function, we're going to count down from three to zero. If we pass 10, we're going to count down from 10 to zero. And then I'm going to click on the button and go into its signals. And I'm going to simply connect the pressed signal here. So when the button is pressed, we will simply call count down and we'll pass three seconds. We don't need to do this anymore. Just like that. Inside of countdown, we're going to create a for loop for i in range zero to seconds. So this is going to loop however many seconds we passed. So if we pass three, this is going to loop three times. Inside of this loop, we want to wait for one second. Let's say await get tree create timer one, and we'll give the timeout signal. And each time we wait, we want to reduce seconds by one, and we want to update the labels text. So let's do it like this. Let's wait, then we'll say seconds minus equals one. And then we'll say, let's get the label text equals stringified seconds. So we'll just take second and turn it into a string and set the countdown label text like that. And we'll also do this at the start before we begin the loop as well. And after the countdown is over, we're going to say rocket.launch. Okay, so let's see if this is going to work. Run the scene. Currently it's zero, when I press launch, three, two, one, go. Awesome, as you can see, we have a working um, countdown tim timer. Maybe we can try with like a different number, let's say five. Launch, five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, great. So that is how to create a countdown timer using a wait. Let me do a final explanation of how this works. So first of all, when we call countdown, we're setting the label to the initial seconds, in this case, five. After that, we're getting into this loop for however many seconds we passed in, in this case, five. After that, the first line of the loop is waiting for one second. After we wait for one second using the await keyword, we take one off from the second, so it goes down to four in the first iteration. Then we set the label to the new seconds that we just you know, took one away from. And then we do this, you know, in this case, four more times. Wait, reduce the seconds, update the label. And after we're done, after we reach zero, we're going to launch the rocket. So that's it, the await keyword is simply going to stop the execution of the function until the signal that you provide is emitted and then you can carry on. And like I said, using the await keyword, you can create all sorts of different action sequences with you know time breaks in between. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you'll probably like this one as well. Also take a look at the link in the description. Pleasure teaching you, see you in the next tutorial.